All right, so let's go on and get started. So the reason why my version of Godzilla and Delta is a replacement is because of many reasons why. Let's start with number one. Number one, the story. The story never changed. It remained the same, sort of. And don't worry, that series will still come out. I think I decided to release it. I'm going to release it on next week. Not this week, but next weekend. Next weekend, you're going to see my version of Godzilla and Delta. So, get ready for that. Okay. The story never changed. The storyline never really changed. No OCs were involved. No nothing. It was just Godzilla and the human characters. The Godzilla could talk to the human characters. And all that stuff that you already know. The plot line. The plot line never really changed at all. The plot line remained the same. And not just that, there was a lot of good character development. Even though my series was kind of copying as a result series, I hope you can forgive me for that. I'm, I'm doing my best to... Re I'm doing what I can to change the series, so please don't hate me. But yeah. Oh, and uh, ask yourself good luck with um, that Rebellion series that you're going to be working on, which is your season finale of season one. I don't know why you're calling it series one, because, well, it's technically season. But whatever floats your boat, I guess. But still, um, good luck with the Rebellion. Then again, you're more focused on working on Godzilla the Rise of Joss 2. Anyway, back. So, yeah. And Godzilla is not Godzilla Earth. He's on the MonsterVerse Godzilla, for which I, that was my decision to have, because I really kind of like the MonsterVerse Godzilla, even though I had my problems with him. Like, for example, for his atomic, well, not really atomic breath, it's mainly his weakness to being shot at by the military. But the MonsterVerse Godzilla in my universe, He's a lot more powerful and a lot more resistant, so he can withstand by being fired at by the military, just like a real Godzilla would. And, uh, yeah. Next up is because Next reason why I'm kind of using the MonsterVerse Godzilla instead of Godzilla Earth. Well, I figured it would be a lot more interesting to use a sort of normal sized Godzilla to be more like a main character to follow rather than a really huge one like Godzilla Earth. Because when it comes to Godzilla Earth, he's just a little too overpowered for simple 
small main villains to handle, like Descador, for example. So he's just, like, way too overpowered. So I figured why not using a smaller Godzilla like Monster vs. Godzilla for example, or Legendary Godzilla for short. I figured why not using Legendary Godzilla would be a lot more easier. reason why I'm using Legendary Godzilla for my Godzilla and Kills is because he's more like an ancient alpha predator that keeps the balance in nature, while Godzilla Earth, on the other hand, just hates humanity and just does anything to get rid of them, even though he's a friend with a few of them. And Legendary guys, I feel like that maybe in a future Monsterverse movie, he might have, like, a connection to one of these humans. Like, like you guys remember, like, um, there was, like, this one character in the Heisei franchise of Godzilla. There was, like, this one character that had, like, a really special connection to Godzilla. She, like, communicated him telepathically with her mind. So I kind of hope we see that in the Monsterverse, because that would be really, really cool, actually. Having someone to understand Godzilla. To, like, understand what he's thinking in his head, or what he's saying. Because I feel like that most Godzilla films had that, where there was someone to understand the monsters. So... Yeah. My last and well, yeah, I guess that was my really last reason. So Yeah, that's basically it. Um, the reason why I'm using Monsterverse Godzilla, and I'm wondering why am I using Hiccup and Elsa, is because, well, for starters, I ship these two. Second, they don't really have big problems like Haru and Yuko had in the Earth Godzilla franchise. Because, like, seriously, like, they, like, like, literally, Hiccup and Elsa literally had no major problems like Haru and Yuko had in the Godzilla Earth franchise, so therefore that's a big, big difference between these two characters. And I know what you're going to be saying, but but Hiccup and Elsa are not from the same universe. Well, I'm kind of getting the feeling that, that they kind of are, but we're just not noticing it yet. But then again, this is a fan-made ship really so it's not really that that big of a problem but then again somehow this ship is becoming so freaking popular like I don't even like somebody even made a freaking trailer of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith Hick Elsa trailer like literally like seriously the folks What's next? Frickin' Twilight for where Hiccup is like a frickin' rare dragon in, like, Hiccup's like, what, frickin' Jacob? And, and, and he turns into a frickin' rare dragon and Elsa uses him instead of, of, like, some other random dude who's, like, playing the role of Edward. Like what? Like, are we going to get that next? Or what? (laughs) 
And plus, the reason I'm putting them with the God's Will is because, well, inspired by my good friend Astrid Zilla, 1954. So, there's that, too. Now, if you're wondering, then, why do the Attack on Titan characters have a role in this story? Can you explain that reason? Well, I can, but anyway, in part three. 